Well, it's a beautiful morning. The sun is out, the birds are singing, and it's right now in the mid-60s. And I'm not sure, I think it's supposed to get about 80 degrees today. <clears throat> but I'm just out doing some gardening work before it gets too hot and come in around lunchtime. And um, Joe's inside working on a bathroom sink, trying to replace a valve. <laughs> but I have dug up some dead rosemary that didn't make it through the winter and uh, weeded a little bit of that landscape area. And um, I've watered my grow bags this morning and the sunflower seeds. And I'm going to try to put the garden panels up if Joe can come out and help when he gets finished and mow today. So it's a busy day. The sunflowers I planted are all popping up right behind the strawberry bed. They are going to be pretty this summer. My rosemary hedge didn't survive through our cold winter this past year, so I'm digging those up and trying to go find something else to replace them with. It's another wet, cool Saturday, and um, the sun's finally coming out. And I'm going to go to the grocery store and to a antique consignment store. I've been looking for something new that I could set on a table on my front porch, and it has to be heavy because we get so much wind up here that it will blow the light things off. So I need some weight to it so I don't have to worry about the wind. So come go with me today to an antique consignment store called the Homestead Shop. 
I used to have a booth there back in the 90s, early 2000s, and um, it's my favorite place here in our part of the world to shop for antiques, and um, then I'll go to the grocery store. So Joe's staying home, so y'all come with me. Okay. <laughs>
pals is just across the parking lot. So I think I'll get me a sweet tea. Well, good chilly morning, everybody. Um, we had another frost last night and I had to cover up all my plants. So I'm getting ready to go out and uncover them. The sun's coming out and uh, get the horses fed and turn them out to pasture. But in Tennessee, we have five winters that we go through before we're finally home free, where we don't have to worry about uh, frost killing our plants. So um, we're in dogwood winter right now, and you can see the dogwood blooming behind me. And we've already been through redbud, that's in early April. In late April is dogwood winter, and then in May we have three winters to go through, early, mid, and May, late May. So the next winter coming up will be locust winter. And about mid-May, we will go through blackberry winter. That's when all the blackberries start to bloom. And then in late May, we will have birches winter. And after that, we should be home free. But come with me as I uncover all my plants. Oh my goodness, I just realized I forgot to cover the panties. And they are budding. But they seem to so, seem to have survived. So I'm so thankful for that. It didn't get below freezing. But it was definitely in the low 30s. Close to freezing last night. So that one's about to bloom out. More buds. You guys hungry? <laughs> All right, I'm coming. Mercy and I have our morning loving right here on this old cart in the sunshine. Yes, we do. You rolling over on wanting your belly scratched? You gotta come over here. Come here. Come here. Say hello, everybody. It's a beautiful morning with the sun coming out, isn't it? Yeah. There goes your head under my arm. Yeah. yeah, she's a pretty girl. Now we are having trouble with moles or voles digging up the dirt all along the fence line. And Mercy sniffs them out and probably kills them if she can catch them. <laughs> so you need to get to work today and catch some of those and get rid of them, okay? You catch them. So now it's time to go in and get cleaned up, fix Mr. Joe some breakfast. I bet he wants biscuits this morning. I bet he does. I'll have to make him some cheese biscuits. Yeah. I'm going to set you down. Okay? Let me set you down so we can get on with our day. Have a good one. 
sun coming through the pines. I love to hear all the birds singing. And this is my grandmother's grapevine. It's been around for hundreds, over a hundred years, I would imagine. But um, my brother had it, and he dug it up and brought it to me last spring. So I'm waiting for sprouts to come out. I don't know when that happens, but I hope it's not dead. It doesn't look too good right now, but he assures me that it will sprout. So we'll see. I'm back in and I'm going to put bacon in the oven while I shower. And Joe's been sitting here with his coffee and ate his cereal. He'll be ready for a good breakfast in a little bit. So I, I put my bacon in a um, nonstick aluminum foil in a baking sheet. And I bake it for about 15 minutes at 400 degrees. So I'll give me just enough time to shower. The last few days, Joe has been working on a uh, plumbing issue that we had in our bath bathroom. <laughs> the uh, faucet, not the faucet, but the handle, it was leaking, wasn't it? Well, it was, the faucet was dripping really bad. So he determined it was the valve in the handle needed to be replaced. So we went and got the parts for that, and he finally got it finished. Was it yesterday or yeah. day before? Saturday, I think. Well, the day before yesterday. Yeah, it was Saturday. You finished it. And it's working great now, so congratulations, hon. Yeah, I got fresh water in here. <laughs> Everybody can enjoy it themselves now. Okay, well, I'm going to go get cleaned up real quick. Now, I'll fix your breakfast. I'll fix your cheese biscuits. I know it's been a while since you had those. You want cheese biscuits this morning? Yes, I do. With the bacon? Yes. And some fried eggs? Joe, I remember a story Joe told when he was young, and he and his dad and somebody else was with you went to Daytona for a race, yeah. and they left the hills of Southwest Virginia to drive to Florida for the NASCAR race down NASCAR, there. For, for uh, Daytona Five Hundred. Yeah, Daytona Five Hundred. And they stopped over in North Carolina at this little country cafe. For breakfast, and they well, asked. We go through the snow to get there. It oh was yeah, almost impassable. I forgot about that. Yep, going over Sam's Gap was pretty bad. I bet, wasn't it? Yeah, Sam's Gap was uh, in full function. <laughs> it, was, it was unbelievable. So you stopped at that cafe, and the waitress asked you, "How did you want your eggs cooked?" And yeah. what did you say? Yeah, just fry them. <laughs> She was wanting to know sunny side up or over easy or whatever, and Joe said, "Ah, just frown." <laughs> oh, but y'all had a good time, didn't you? Yeah, he was time. with you and your dad on that trip. Huey Ellis. Okay. My uncle. He married. He married uh, my mom's sister. Okay. Well, and Joe's sister, Linda, has written um, a book. She's not got it published, but she's got a transcript of it she gave us of stories that she remembers, things happening around the community where they grew up over in southwest Virginia in the mountains. It's a coal mining town, and, and uh, some of them are hysterical. So I may just read a couple of those stories to you guys. Yeah, don't, don't pass them too far. <laughs> anyway, I've got to get a shower. We'll be back later. Okay, I've showered and I've cleaned up and ready to make the rest of breakfast for Joe. And start, I'm going to start with the biscuits. I've already got the bacon out of the oven and it looks really good. And I'm just going to make a few biscuits. So I'm going to show you how I make these cheese biscuits. Now, I've made biscuits and put a video on it before, but these are just a little different. They're cheese biscuits, and uh, I just put cheese inside with the dough, and if you want it for dinner, like for an Italian dish or something, to have the garlic cheese biscuits, I just put some fresh garlic and butter in a skillet to uh, season that butter with the garlic, and then I just brush the tops of the biscuit with that infused garlic butter, 
before I bake them, and they turn out so good. But we're not putting garlic on them this morning, so this is how we do it. Okay, I start out with just a heaping half cup of white lily self-rising flour in my little bowl. And I go ahead and put a little bit on my mat where I'm going to comb out. Then I use baking powder, just, just like a pinch. This is a big serving spoon, so that's probably half a teaspoon or so that I'm putting in there. And I'm going to stir that up to get the flour and baking powder mixed up. Then I take a stick of butter from the refrigerator. I use real butter, and I think this is the salted butter. And I just had this little mini hand grater, and it works good for these little biscuits. And I just grate about a tablespoon or so of butter. And to get it off of the grater, you just run some flour on it, and it grabs that butter and brings it right off to the other side. And then you just coat that butter good with the flour. I'm going to have to get my apron on. Okay, I've got my apron on now to keep myself clean from the flour. So I have the self rising flour and the uh, baking powder and the grated butter in here. And I just stirred that butter to get it coated good with the flour. And I'm going to add some cheese. Use whatever cheese you like, but cheddar is good. I have a little bit left here of the triple cheddar. From and I think it's just enough to put in here with these biscuits. And you probably want, for this half a cup of flour, maybe a little less than a quarter cup of cheese. And you just mix that cheese up good to get it good and coated with the flour and the butter. Make a little well in the center for your buttermilk. And I use whole buttermilk. And I just pour a little bit in that hole, maybe a quarter of a cup to start with. And that's not going to be quite enough, so just a tiny bit more. You can always add more buttermilk, but you can't take it out, so. That should do it right there. Let's see. You don't want it too wet or too dry, just moist for all of the ingredients to hold together. Then I'm going to turn it out on the flour board here. preheated to 475. Put a little flour on top. And I just fold these over a few times. If 
folding over is how you get the layers in your biscuit. I think that looks good. My biscuit cutter. And I usually cut them out about the thickness of your biscuit cutter. And over here, I have my cast iron pan that I greased up with Crisco. So I'm just going to lay these on here. This usually makes about four biscuits. And that's enough for me and Joe. And I'm really not supposed to eat them because I'm gluten sensitive, but sometimes I can't help myself. Can I, honey? No, but you do a good job trying. I do try. Now, that's the third biscuit, and I'm going to make one biscuit out of what's left over here. Just kind of shape it into a biscuit, and there we go. Now, I think I'm going to put a little bacon grease on top of these biscuits and bake them at 475 for about 10 minutes or until they're good and golden brown. Okay, here are the biscuits and I have put some bacon grease from the bacon I fixed on top and they're going in the oven. Okay, there's about three minutes left on the biscuits so it's time to fix the eggs and I'm going to fix both of us two eggs each and I'm going to fry them, ah, fry them like Joe said <laughs> when he was younger. And I like to cook ours in butter. Biscuits are ready. Nice and golden brown. Okay, this is our throwdown breakfast for lunch. It's almost noon. <laughs> so I typically don't eat breakfast and I wait till lunch to eat. But Joe always eats cereal uh, of the mornings when he gets up with his medication. It has something on his stomach and then we usually have breakfast for noon for our lunch meal. So you want to say the blessing, honey? Okay. Let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for this day that you've given us. Thank you for your watch, care, your guidance and direction that you provide to us on a daily basis. We love you and we praise you and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. And it's going to be good, y'all.